Welcome to Battlefield 5 in high dynamic range color. Isn't it simply breathtaking? Well, no it's not. In fact, it looks terrible. But that's not the fault of Battlefield at all. And that's the point of today's video. The issue is that recording gameplay in HDR on a PC is a royal pain in the ass. I'm going to explain that, the reasons for it, and I hope to start a discussion that can lead to an acceptable solution. As of now, I don't have one. And for the record, I took a photo of my display with my cell phone, just so that you can see that the game actually looks fine when displayed on an HDR-capable monitor. Here's their game recording through the software, and here's the photo. See that it looks a hell of a lot better? Let's get into the why of that. Historically, graphics have been displayed using what's either called 8-bit color or sometimes 24-bit color. They both mean the exact same thing. We have three colors per pixel, red, green, and blue. With 8-bit color, each of those colors is represented by 8 bits, as shown here. Each bit can either be a 0 or a 1, off or on. Because each color is an 8-bit number, they can range from 0 to 255. Let's look at a couple examples to hopefully make it a bit more clear. If we set all the bits to 0, we end up with a combination of 0, 0, and 0 for red, green, and blue. That's how the color black is represented. It actually means no color at all. Let's inverse that and set all the bits to 1. We end up with a combination of 255, 255, and 255 for red, green, and blue. Ultimately, that means white. White is the existence of all colors. A couple of more random examples. Let's say set red to 47, green to 196, and blue to 89. As you can see, we get sort of a darker green color. Finally, red to 200, green to 35, and blue to 145. The result is sort of a light violet color. Before high dynamic range color came along, that's how PCs and TVs would take care of displaying colors on the screen. Mixing 8 bits of red, 8 bits of green, and 8 bits of blue together. 3 times 8 is 24, so that's where the phrase 24-bit color comes from. As I said earlier, it means the same thing. One side effect of this is that applications that work with video and photos have also historically been written to work with 8-bit color, otherwise known as standard dynamic range. These applications include OBS Studio, the app that I use to record gameplay. Well, what about high dynamic range? The way it's handled is literally by adding two more bits per color per pixel. The result is that each of the red, green, and blue colors is represented by 10 bits, not 8. This is also sometimes referred to as 30-bit color for hopefully obvious reasons. The extra 2 bits per color, or extra 6 bits per pixel, allow the PC to display colors and brightness levels that are even more accurate than with 8-bit color. The problem is that OBS and other recording apps can't deal with 10-bit color. They're simply not set up for that. What they end up doing, basically, and I'm really simplifying here, is that they truncate each of the 10-bit representations down to 8-bit. And that's why you're seeing these odd colors and strange brightness levels. They don't do any sort of conversion at all. They just lop off 2 bits per color per pixel and call it good. And it's not so good. What to do about this? And why am I playing Battlefield 5 in HDR? Well, I'll answer the second question first. I really like how BF5's HDR is done. I feel as though it gives me a bit more visibility, especially in the darker areas. Honestly, it looks gorgeous in 4K HDR, quite a bit better than 4K SDR, in my opinion. But there's a cost, and that's when I try to record the game. A company called Marillus has a recording and streaming app available called Action. It's a commercial app, but I think it only costs 30 or 40 bucks. It's not expensive at all. The gameplay you're looking at here was recorded while I was playing in HDR, but with action recording it. 
It looks good, right? So what's the issue? Well, the issue is that Action is inline converting the HDR graphics to SDR before it writes the resulting H.264 file. And that is costing me some of my system resources and resulting in a loss of frame rate. I have the OEM frame rate in the upper right corner. You can see that it only hits my 140 frame rate limit every so often. In my opinion, that's not acceptable. I think a better solution would be for Action, or better yet, OBS Studio, to support recording and outputting 10-bit files. If the recording software could output 10-bit files, it wouldn't cause a hit to my frame rate. The resulting files would only be usable in applications that can support 10-bit color. My editor, Premiere Pro for instance, is one such application, so that wouldn't be a problem for me. To that end, OBS Studio has a website that folks can vote for suggestions. Ones that get a lot of attention may see some action from the developers. I can't stress the word may enough. The changes asked may also be so difficult that the developers simply don't have the time to do it. Remember that OBS is free after all. However, I've left my suggestion to support 10-bit video on the site, and I'll leave a link for that in the description below. If you're interested, please click on the link and please vote my suggestion up. Supporting 10-bit video won't have any adverse effects on normal 8-bit video recording. It'll just add more capabilities to an already superb piece of software. What else is there? Does anyone else have a suggestion on software to use that can properly record 10-bit video without adding load to the system? Shadowplay can't do it. OBS Studio can't do it. We've seen the results of action. It's closest, but it still can't do it. The 4K60 capture cards from Elgato and Avermedia that support HDR don't actually work in a way that I can use them. I've tested them out. Their HDR support only seems to work if you use the HDMI ports on the cards in pass-through mode, meaning you connect your GPU to the capture card and then your capture card to your display. No one makes a proper DisplayPort pass-through capture card as of yet. And I can't use those HDMI pass-throughs because my display only works at its peak performance using a DisplayPort connection from the GPU. Replicating my display over the HDMI port to the capture card doesn't work. I've already tried that. As soon as I fire Battlefield 5 up with that enabled, I lose HDR in game. I think that's more of a Windows limitation and less to, it has less to do with the capture card. But I'm also talking out of a bit of ignorance here. I simply don't know. However, if you have any other ideas, leave them below. Maybe there's something I just haven't thought of yet. Thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you later.